Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting topics. The first one is about, as you can see, Rubiel Mosquera, aka Nexilla, and this is the video of him squatting 400 pounds for 30 freaking reps. Now, if you were wondering how did he get those legs to be that massive, well, here is your answer. Heavyweight with a lot of reps. And 30 reps, you're gonna see at the end of this video, it's gonna be 30 reps to failure, basically. So, if anybody's struggling with leg growth, they can try this. I mean, not 400 pounds, of course, but as many pounds as you can for 30 reps to freaking failure. You will see at the end of this video, it is a complete failure on a squat, on a regular back squat. This is as hardcore as it gets. This guy is incredibly strong, physically and mentally both. I mean, lifting this much weight for this many reps to failure on a regular squat, you gotta be, you gotta be crazy, you know? So, I'm not sure when this video was taken, was this before the show or after Prague Pro, but it doesn't really matter. The point that I'm trying to make here is, he needs to lay off the leg training. At this point, he kind of established himself as the quad guy. He arguably has, I don't know, the biggest, look at this rep. Look at this rep, that was crazy. And he's actually gonna do one more, check this out. Yeah, one more rep. This guy is insane, this guy is crazy. Back to what I was saying, this guy kind of established himself uh, at this show as the leg guy, as the quad guy. I mean, he probably has the biggest legs in the history of IFBB. Maybe Ronnie Coleman had bigger legs, but I don't even know, like, he is insane in that department, and that's good for now. That was good, I mean, he cracked the top three at this show, but in order for him to progress and to get at a top level, he needs to lay off that leg training for sure. Now, in this pose right here, abs and thighs pose. I think he is winning this pose personally, because of the depth of his abs, the conditioning of his abs, and also the size and the development of his quads. But, in the upper body, you can see that he is definitely not matching his lower legs. Those lats need to pop more. Even though his upper body is also really freaking massive, it's kind of getting dwarfed by his enormous legs. Another thing is the quad separation. His legs are so massive, so thick, so dense, that the separation doesn't look very deep. So, in my opinion, right now, at this point, he should lay off those heavy squats, those high rep squats, and maybe focus on, like, leg extensions, not a lot of it, just to try and to work on those details and conditioning, and, you know, let, let the legs chill a little bit and focus on the upper body. Even though his upper body is also massive, it's not matching his legs. And the other thing he needs to stop doing immediately is this. He needs to stop training that freaking neck. I mean, this guy's nickname is Nexilla. And maybe this made him popular at one point, but is that really what he wants? To be a popular Instagram bodybuilder or he wants to be an actual top Olympia bodybuilder? Which he can be for sure, but bigger neck is not gonna help him, it's gonna hurt him. I mean, ideally, he should get that neck smaller. I don't know if it's possible, but getting it bigger is definitely not gonna help him. It's ruining his proportions, his aesthetics. I don't know when this video was taken, but it doesn't matter. He didn't get this huge of a neck by accident. He trained it, and he needs to stop that ASAP. He has the genetics to be the next freak, the next Ronnie Coleman, or at least like a top three Olympian, but he needs to work on his balance. And that means not getting that neck any bigger, and definitely not getting those legs bigger, working on leg separation, improving that back and maybe arms in the front poses, not in the side poses. So his physique needs to mature, to get more balanced, more symmetrical, and he is up there, man. He is one of the freakiest guys right now, and I can see him really dominating that Mr. Olympia stage very soon. But as far as next year, I do see him in my top five. Alright, next up we got a physique update of James Hollingshead. It's been a while since we saw anything from this guy. He decided to take a full year off. And the next show he's gonna do is gonna be Arnold Classic Ohio. What is very interesting is that recently, maybe a couple of months ago, he started working with uh, Milos Sharchev. Now, why is this so interesting? It's interesting because Milos has completely different approach than James. 
Some of the biggest differences would be for example protein intake, Milos is a high protein guy and James is, let's say, on a low to moderate end. The other thing would be approach to insulin, you guys know what Milos is all about, his insulin protocols, and whenever this was a topic and James was on podcast, he didn't seem to agree with that, he does use some insulin but like only with meals, he wasn't really a believer in like insulin pre-workout, during workout and stuff like that, and you guys know Milos is all about that stuff, so those are the two differences. Also, Milos has a completely different approach to training, but I doubt they changed this. So, those two things that I just mentioned are probably the biggest differences that probably Milos implemented now, working with James, and I'm really curious to see what will be the final result. Recently, I saw this uh, video from Samson Dauda, and I was looking at his physique and I was thinking, Wow, man, how much progress did Samson actually make in the past year or two once he started working with the Milos Archev? Like, he made so much progress, he got so much bigger, so much better, and I was thinking, what the hell is the reason for this happening? It's not like he's new to bodybuilding and Milos just showed him how to eat and how to train and stuff like that. Samson always knew all that stuff, and it's not like he was natural before. He was already doing everything and trying his best, and suddenly, once he started working with Milos, he grew. Like, he grew, he changed a lot. This is basically a metamorphosis. Like, this is a completely different bodybuilder now. This is third best bodybuilder in the world. And up until, like, two years ago, he was a mediocre professional bodybuilder. He was struggling to win regular shows. And just look at this physique right now. What is the difference that made Samson this much better? What the hell did Milo Sarcha do to him? Was it the insulin? The insulin protocols? Was it high protein diet? Maybe a combination and some other things as well? I have no idea, but I'm curious if the same progression is gonna happen with James Hollins yet. He has another 12 weeks to go until the Arnold Classic Ohio, but Arnold Classic Ohio is as tough to win almost as Mr. Olympia these days because the prize money is so high. Last year it was $300,000, Mr. Olympia is four fifty, dollars so it's not that big of a difference and we can expect some hard hitters, some big players to show up. We already know that Samson is doing it, we don't know if Nick Walker is gonna recover and actually do it, maybe Heidi is gonna jump in, maybe even Derek, who knows, but there's gonna be a lot of top guys up there and I don't know what can I expect from James, but at this point, at 12 weeks out, he looks great. He looks great for this point, like he looks really lean and hard and big as well. I don't know what his weight is currently, but if he's doing, you know, the insulin protocols and not getting any fatter, looking hard and full like this, then he's on a good path. And I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen in 12 weeks. He's gonna do other shows after the Arnold Classic as well, I believe Arnold Classic UK and Arnold Classic Brazil, maybe some other shows too. So it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of progress he made taking that one full year off and now also working with Milo Sharch. So it's gonna be definitely very exciting. All right, next up we got Regan Grimes with his physique update, another client of Milo Sharchev who also made a lot of progress from last year and he also took a year off and he definitely made a lot of progress, uh, he grew a lot, he got much bigger, he managed to beat Nathan Diasha and he also placed inside of the top 10 of the Mr. Olympia, which was all a great success and he obviously was much bigger and much better than before. Now, in all the podcasts that Milos is doing, basically the impression that I got is that uh, Regan Grimes hasn't really been doing as much work as Milos expected of him. And yet he managed to progress. Now, at this point, it seems like he's actually like 100% on. And as you can see, he just reached the new high weight of 300 freaking pounds. And it's crazy that he says right here that he's eating up to 7,000 calories a day. That's a lot of food. But yeah, I believe he's hungry. He says that he's hungry for every meal and every workout was fantastic. And that's usually the case after the show, like up to two months post-show. But after that, it's probably not gonna be like that. And also he got to this high weight of 300 pounds, but for his height, really he needs to be like 330, 340. 
can he get to that point? That's the question. Well, he can, but he needs to eat a lot more. So if he's eating 7,000 calories post-show and he's maintaining the weight of 300 pounds, he's probably going to have to go over that. Like 7,000 every single day, maybe eight, 9,000 at some point. That's going to be insane. That's going to require a lot of commitment, a lot of sacrifice. It's going to be really hard. And we're going to see what Regan is made of. Is he going to be able to push through to be that committed, to be that focused and that driven, to actually go and have a full off season of being on point and really force feeding and trying to get that massive? If he does that, then... You know, he has all the tools to be the top Olympian at some point in near future, if you ask me. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.